The transatlantic slave trade accounted for uprooting and moving upwards of 12 million enslaved people to the shores of the United States. And like most settled parts of the New World, East Tennessee has its own chapter in that history. 10 News reporter Gabrielle Hayes shares a new piece of that long hidden history. The institution of slavery stole the history, culture and lives of millions of people for centuries. Tonight we bring you two families on a quest to reclaim their own stolen stories. Um, Isaac Dockery was um, a brick maker. He owned his business. Isaac's brick made up the oldest part of the Sevier County Courthouse. His family would also build New Salem Baptist Church in 1886. Both buildings still stand today. Do they say that it feels like they step back in time? They do. This is Shadina Dockery, Isaac's great-great-granddaughter. It is an extreme pride. Isaac was a free man, but before he started making bricks, he worked as a store clerk for a Union soldier named McKinley Thomas. During the war, that would bring him some light, but also some pain. The Confederates came looking for him. They asked Isaac where he was. Isaac would not tell where he was. So they put a rope around his neck and they drug Isaac Dockery through the streets of Sevierville, trying to get him to reveal where McKinley Thomas was. and. He never did, and from what I understand, he bore those scars for the rest of his life where he was actually drugged through the city. Wow. However, through Thomas, Isaac would meet his wife. Her name was Charlotte. They were slaves of the Thomas family, yes. She's talking about Charlotte and her mom, Mary, and from Isaac and Charlotte, the Dockery legacy would begin. Michelle Daniel knows that feeling all too well. One thing about legacy is it's very difficult to, to appreciate legacy and appreciate the, the power of the struggle yeah. if you don't know what the struggle is. Her family has also traced their lineage too. Six generations up from Michelle is Adeline Crozier. So Adeline was the daughter of a slave. Mm -hmm. We don't know who our mother was, but she, she was purchased by this family called the Staples family in Oliver Spring, who lived in Oliver Springs. You know, they just talked about how she liked music and things of that nature, like to dance. Since this records show, Adeline was born in 1845 and later had a son in 1861. His name was Jack. Jack later married a woman named Lizzie. They had eight children. Their lineage would become teachers, nurses, Tuskegee Airmen, activists, and authors. They desegregate Clinton High School but also Oliver Springs High School as well. A legacy Michelle says is powerful. Survivors came from her line. It's not something that you run from, it's something that you kind of run to. Her family would continue to break barriers through eight different generations. However, one sticks with Michelle the most. They had a full functioning farm in the very place where their family you know, not even probably 100 years before, was enslaved. was enslaved, where the cattle were more valuable than the people, than their children. Putting the pieces together to rewrite a story stolen for generations all over the world. And while it gets emotional along the way, both families say this isn't the end of their lineage, and it's only the beginning of their stories. Sometimes you wish folks understood just how difficult it is, but then you think, no, no, I don't want to think about the difficulty. I just want to think about, I finally found you. <laughs> you can run, but you cannot hide. I finally found you. <laughs> Even though we, as we acknowledge what, what slavery did to a people, it didn't break them. And it doesn't break us. We need people to know that we were here and we contributed to the community. So and you're still here and we're st uh, yeah, we're not going anywhere. Just if there's family out there <laughs> that sees this story and we haven't found you, find us. We we have our arms open and we'll leave the light on. So uh, we're we're looking for family all the time. 
For more on the history of these families and their contributions to East Tennessee, you can find the full Stolen Story series. That's on our website, WBIR.com.